Good evening, everybody, and welcome. If you're here to see a wonderful evening of skincare recommendations from two and a half, I'll be the half, uh, incredibly brilliant people, then you're in absolutely the right place. It is 5.30 Pacific time sharp. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to give people about another two minutes uh, to join us. Um, and that way we give people, you know, it's, it's some people are having crazy weather. Um, some are just straggling, but two more minutes and we'll get started uh, in the interim. We'll go silent and you'll be seeing our smiling faces and uh, we'll be right back. Uh, we're going to get started and I, I couldn't take it anymore. I was jealous of Linda. I was having a nice glass of wine. <laughs> Me too. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, let's get started. So this evening, um, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you some logistics and some updates uh, on, on what's happening tonight and exactly what we're going to go through. Um, and then we're going to get right into it. And then, of course, uh, we'll do a good wrap up and a synopsis of, uh, of everything that we've talked about. Plus, you'll be able to, to uh, replay this so you can replay every riveting sec uh, second of it. Um, in about 24 hours, we'll have the replay up and live and ready for you to, to have another look at. So tonight we are talking about uh, um, uh, a secret that's been kept in my eyes for way too long. And that's a, um, as far as skincare goes. And that's all about cannabinoids. And we'll get into what cannabinoids are and what that's all about. But, you know, the big ones like CBD and THC. So tonight we are going to uh, delve into skincare, proper skincare, what's good, what's bad. We're going to get into uh, cannabinoid based products and we're going to talk about how, what and when to use what um, so that you know by the end of this uh, wonderful time we have together uh, exactly what to use and to use to protect your skin and bring the natural beauty that you have back to your skin. So. First uh, thing I want to say is we are not giving you medical advice here. We're, we're um, here to educate and point you in the right direction. So, of course, talk to a medical professional before you uh, do anything, whether it's topical or ingesting, especially when it comes to, to cannabis. Um, and uh, this evening, we will be, uh, like I said, replaying this and we'll have all the links and, and email addresses and anything that you need will be in that replay. So. Uh, the other piece of logistics is if you have any questions, um, there is a, bu a button at the bottom of your um, Zoom screen and it says Q&A. If you have questions, please put it in there. If you put it in chat, I might not see it. Uh, I apologize if I don't, but it'll be very helpful if you put it in the Q&A. All right, so we are together tonight for about an hour. We're gonna go through all of the wonderful, interesting content and education, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end. That doesn't mean keep all your questions to the very end. Ask them during the session, and I will do my best to get to them as they come up. Anything that we miss, we will do our absolute best at the end to answer any questions that we miss during the session, okay? So don't hold them all back. This is, this is a, a casual, interactive session as much as we possibly can be. All right. So uh, I am Jason Turner. I'll be your MC um, and host for this evening. And more importantly, we have two wonderful guests with us tonight. Um, we have Dr. Ashley McGovern, who is a founder of the Manhattan Dermatology and a a Aesthetics. I'm sorry, Ashley, I always have trouble <laughs> with that word. Um, board certified dermatologist in LA, one of the leading dermatologists in LA. So we're very lucky to have her with us. Uh, she's just a wealth of knowledge. She believes in providing genuine, honest, expert dermatological care. Um, she also has a line of products called Glow MD Skincare. So check that out after the webinar. Um, all kinds of wonderful things, and they come from uh, a board certified doctor. So you know it's some good stuff. Um, Ashley lives in Manhattan Beach with uh, with her husband and children. Um, and I think your husband is an orthopedic surgeon. Is that right, Ashley? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, Ashley was born in Puerto Rico. Um, now she's got rabbits and turtles, and I think she has a zoo somewhere <laughs> in, in her house. Um, and here's a little interesting tidbit besides the zoo in her home. Um, she was a little embarrassed in college to tell people that she was going to be a dermatologist for a living. But um, uh, based on everything I've seen, Ashley's well gotten over that, uh, phenomenally successful. And I don't think she's embarrassed anymore to say that she's a dermatologist. Um, and our other second wonderful guest, 
Linda Shea from Shea International. Um, wow, Linda's amazing. I just got to meet Linda about a month ago, and I can't wait to hear all the wonderful things she's going to share tonight. Um, and, and Shea International, by the way, is specializes in USDA, uh, USDA organic and toxic free certified skincare and beauty products. So Linda really knows her stuff when it comes to, to mother nature and, and, and the natural way to take care of your skin and beyond. Um, they are the only company that is both USDA uh, uh, organic certified and toxic free certified. So that's pretty special. She's got 35 years of experience. She doesn't look like anywhere near having 35 years experience um, uh, in this industry. Now, here's something really interesting. Um, Linda's been married for 41 years and her, her wonderful husband, Frank, who I've also gotten to meet, uh, asked her to marry him on the first date. So there's interesting thing number one. Interesting thing number two, she said yes. And they're still married. So congratulations. <laughs> That's phenomenal, Linda. Um, and, and as a special thank you to Linda, Linda's actually in a snowstorm she spun out her car, went into a ditch, and she still made it here tonight. So that's some determination to be here. So thank you. I appreciate it for both of you. Okay, so let's get into it. We got a lot to talk about tonight. So the first big thing is, let's just put it out on the table. Um, and, and that's really to do with, with you know, in general, um, when we age or when we abuse our skin, blah, 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 um, things happen. And, and, you know, I guess this is, mo this is really for you, Ashley. What, what I'm wondering is what happens to our skin when we age and or when we uh, abuse it? And does it really need to be revitalized? Um, hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you guys for having me. And um, yes, your skin uh, can definitely be revitalized. It should be revitalized. And your skin can actually get better as you age. And I see this all the time in my patients with the right products, a little discipline. Um, it can definitely get better as we age. And I've even seen this in my own skin. So um, I'm excited to share some of um, these tips with you tonight. Um, but in terms of what happens to our skin when we age, well, you know, the biggest thing is probably the cell turnover really slows down. So when we're young, our skin is turning over really, really quickly. Um, healthy new skins are always coming up to the top of the surface. Those cells look nice and pretty and smooth. And as we age, that um, cell turnover really slows down and you get a buildup of these like dull older cells on top. And those cells really impart like a dullness to the skin, which, which a lot of people probably see in themselves. Um, a lot of those cells have pigment in them. And so your, your skin looks a little bit more blotchy a lot of those cells have mutations in them from the sun, from pollution, from the environment. Um, and those mutations cause your skin cells to look kind of rough, red, blotchy. I'm sure people see this all the time in their skin. Hey, Ashley. Yeah. Sorry, quick question. So you talked about, why don't I put this up on the screen? Because you and I talked about this and you, you had this sort of wonderful um, voiceover, but I'm going to put this on the screen when it comes to the, the layers of the skin, because, you know, I found this interesting when you were talking about it, because um, you had said the surface of the skin, and I think as the conversation goes on tonight, we are going to, um, here, I'll bring it up now, um, you see that on your screen? Yes. Okay, so you talked about the layer, so when you said the, the, the surface layer gets a little dry, is that that uh, epidermis? Gee, yeah, smart. the epidermis, so that epidermis, it it, you know, that's where you get all of those build up of older kind of dirty looking dull cells. And so if we could normalize that equilibrium and making that those cells a little bit more fresh and new to mimic younger skin, that's when your skin starts to look a lot better. And that dermal layer, that nice big pink layer, as we age, that layer, that's what kind of gives your skin its structure. That's where the collagen and the elastin layer is. That gets really messy and disorganized and when that happens, our skin really starts to sag, it loses its elasticity. And that's where people complain about crepiness. So it's a combination of all of those things happening. So that's happening when your skin ages. Also, you, you know, our skin can't compensate like it used to. You know, when you're younger and you kind of get sunburn after sunburn, you know, each summer and the next summer your skin looks great. Um, you're not really noticing what's happening. 
Um, but all of that is cumulative. It's all adding up. And as we get older, older skin can't compensate, you know, like younger skin can. So as we get older, it almost seems like your skin starts to age quicker. At least that's what I see in my patients. And that's what they, that's what they tend to see as well. Um, so we kind of lose that compensatory mechanism that younger skin have, has. So if we can bring all of that back, that would be great. Now, you know, traditionally to like revitalize the skin, you'll hear us talking about retinoids, retin-A, um, retinol, you hear that all the time. And that, what those do is those really increase that cell turnover. So it makes it look like younger skin, mimic younger skin. You hear us talking about vitamin C or antioxidants that can help prevent some of that sun damage, um, to combat some of the free radicals that we get from pollution and toxins. You'll hear us talking about glycolic acid, which breaks down some of those dull surface cells and makes the collagen stimulated again, um, brings back health, healthy, fresh new cells. Um, but tonight, I mean, I'm so excited. Now we're gonna talk, I feel like we're at a whole new era and there's this whole um, new field that we're learning more and more about and that is the cannabinoid system. And I think that um, there's such potential for these products and these formulas and um, CBD and THC to be used in the skin. And I think we're gonna see that it complements what we already have, all of those things that I just talked about, but I think that they can probably do so much more even. And so um, I'm excited to you know, share with everybody tonight and uh, listen to Linda as well. Uh, she has a wealth of knowledge, so. I yeah, think- let's talk about that. Let's talk about cannabinoids. And, and, and by the way, I applaud you, Ashley, because um, there's not a lot of doctors that have your, your foresight and open-mindedness. So kudos to you and thank you. Um, so Linda, cannabinoids. Let's talk about cannabinoids when it comes to skincare, because I know you know all about this. Please share. Well, cannabinoids are the components in hemp or in a marijuana plant, but in a cannabis plant, that have the properties, the active properties. So active properties, for instance, when you um, think of a particular plant, it might have one active property, it might have multiples. Well, the cannabinoids are the multiple active properties in hemp that have so many benefits for the skin and for the body. The Cannabinoids, there's 13 that we actively look for when we're putting cannabinoids or hemp in a skincare product, but there's over a hundred. And it's the balance and the activity of those that make the difference in a skincare product or when you're taking it orally. So the cannabinoids, it sounds like such a long, complicated word, but the cannabinoids are, if you can think of the A, B, C, D, E's of the nutrition in a hemp plant. And that's exactly what you've got is all the different cannabinoid A, cannabinoid C, cannabinoid D. And each of these play a different part in revitalizing, renewing, healing, um, relaxing, uh, reducing pain. So each of them have a different function and purpose. Some companies actually like to eliminate the whole plant and isolate down to one cannabinoid, but then you're into a drug. So I believe, and Papa and Barkley, which is a company we're going to talk about tonight, they're a strong proponent of it's the whole plant that brings the blessings. When you eliminate the pieces and parts and you end up with just one single isolate, you've got a synthetic. You've basically uh, destroyed the plant. So we're gonna talk about the benefits of all the cannabinoids and how our endocannabinoid system is there to receive each and every part and component. And Ashley, you did a beautiful job on the skin um, and, and talking about all the ways it ages. One of the things that I only really started paying attention to in my aging skin is how it loses fat. 
Like, how can that be? We gained fat down here. What does it do? (laughs) Does it just fall down? I don't know. Like, where does the fat here go? But it's almost like our skin has the surface tension of this much surface. But when you lose fat, you lose that surface tension. And so the skin has to fall. It doesn't have the plumpness to hold it in place. So out of all the many things you talked about, I also go, okay, so am I losing fat? Where is it? Can I push it up? So I just wanted to add that. When when we're younger, the fat is, you know, in these compartments and they're all connected together really delicately. And as we age, the compartments start to separate and fall apart. And you have bony resorption as well. So you're right. It's not just the, you know, the skin is what's like overlaying all of those deeper structures. So we do other stuff like that in our office. You know to what? Bring, bring those back up. It sucks yeah. that that happens. <laughs> like it sucks. <laughs> nice, nice plain way to put it, Linda. You're absolutely oh, we right. We got to talk about how to fix it, Jason. <laughs> Let's do that. So um, you said a couple of things I want to highlight. One is pop on Barkley. So, you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, we, we looked at cannabinoids, you know, regardless of brand, we looked at cannabinoids in, at three wells. Um, and we, you know, we saw the power of cannabinoids to, to, to um, protect and to revitalize our skin. And we started really looking at the different products from all different manufacturers. And I got to tell you, and, and this is one of the reasons we asked Papa and Barkley to, to participate tonight and that they sponsored it. We're, none of us are being paid. So it, it's all, you know, it's none of that. This is all us doing it because we, we want to bring this information to you. But we looked around at products and Papa, Bark, Papa and Barkley absolutely crushes it. And for a lot of the reasons, you know, more reasons than even when you said, Lyndon, that they really look at the whole plant and they bring the whole plant into their products. Um, but even, you know, down to their manufacturing and how, and I know Linda, they manufacture with you and, you know, how that's done. So, so, uh, naturally and organically and, you know, considering carbon footprints and all these sorts of things. So at the end of the day, you know, and we are going to talk about pop on Barkley because not because we're being paid, like I said, we're not, it's because it's such a phenomenal product. And we'll talk about that or a couple of products, actually, we'll talk about that in a minute, but, but. Let's stay on this cannabinoid thing because I want to ask a very plain question because I had this question that was, can cannabis, look, we, we see a, a hundred products advertised on TV all the time, hydrating, plumping, you know, revitalizing, blah, 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 blah. So the big question is, can cannabinoids truly, really help protect and revitalize our skin? That, you know, is that the case? I'll jump in first, Ashley, and then you can follow Absolutely. And the reason is because each part of the skin's function, each part of the body's function works on switches. So cells open to receive nutrition. They close when toxins are nearby. They open when we're excited. They close when we're depressed. There's just a number of functions. So when you think about all the light switches in your house, If you go to flip a switch and it doesn't go on or off, you get a dysfunctional switch. Part of what happens with aging is the switches get stuck. Part of what happens with, uh, and okay, we can go from an upset personality and upset you're angry or you're depressed to skin being angry. It's red, it's inflamed, it's got blemishes to it's depressed, it's slowed down like a couch potato, it's sluggish, it it looks old, it acts old. So when we talk about the functions of the cannabinoids, one of the functions is the light switches. Let me give you an example. You all know your Christmas tree and Christmas tree lights. Well, all those lights, have a switch that allows the electricity to turn them on. Those switches, if 50% of your Christmas tree didn't light up, well, you might be, your Christmas tree lights might be 50 years old, 35 years old, however old you are when you're beginning to notice the body aging. 
So if some of that is related to the switch is not working, the endocannabinoid system in the body has stopped working. So we wouldn't have an endocannabinoid system if we didn't need cannabinoids. It's like you don't need to eat. You wouldn't have a mouth if you didn't need to eat. So with your body needing these cannabinoids, absolutely some will help the skin plump up. Not because they themselves are the plumping agent. They're going to activate the switches that allow your skin to once again retain moisture. There are agents in, can, in your skin, uh, your mother cell, that reproduces those cells Ashley was talking about. And when Dr. Ashley mentioned that they slow down, well, they slow down because they become sluggish. Cannabinoids help speed that up. They help revitalize the skin to an agelessness state. So that's why these are so important. And does a, oh, you're gonna ask me about a hemp plant and a <laughs> marijuana plant. So I won't even, I won't so, jump ahead of you, Jason. <laughs> so Ashley, everything Linda just said, right? We, it, it, I, I'm gonna put you on the spot. And, and that is, you know, as a doctor, as a medical professional, when you hear all of that, because we hear it and, and you know, my, my personal biases aside, mm -hmm. I absolutely believe everything Linda said. Yeah. <laughs> Put it out there. But as a medical professional, a doctor, you know, do you do you agree with that? And and you know, if if so, why? I I do. You know, I absolutely do. I think that uh, the more research that I've done and the more I've looked into this, I mean, like just what she said, there absolutely is this endocannabinoid system in the skin, um, and you know, maybe science. Um, you know, I think that. In academic medicine, I think we're a little bit slow sometimes to grasp some of these newer ideas, but I think that the experts in this field, uh, you know, and have known this for a long time. And I think that they've known that CBD is a really potent natural anti-inflammatory. And so I am actually, I'm excited for these, you know, more, you know, traditional medicine's always waiting for more studies, more studies, more evidence, more evidence. So. Um, I think that with a little bit of time, I'm excited for that to kind of trickle into the traditional medical community and into dermatology. And if I can be a, a part of something like that, I, I would love to. Um, I used to tell my patients, you know, when I was training 15, 20 years ago, dermatologists, we used to tell our patients that diet played no role in their acne, even though they would tell us time and time again, I know this is making my acne worse. And we were trained to tell them that that, it, that that's not true and that there's no evidence to support that. Well, now, you know, 15 to 20 years later, we absolutely know that diet plays a huge role in acne um, and that if you, you know, cut back on, well, not for everybody, but for some patients, that if you cut back on, um, you know, sugars and processed foods and for some people dairy, um, that it absolutely plays a role. So I feel like we're maybe in a similar, you know, situation um, with this new era of um, bringing cannabinoids to the surface. You know, like I said, I think a lot of people have known this for a long time. Um, but I'm really excited about the potential for using these um, in my patients for inflammatory conditions like acne, um, rosacea. I think it's going to play a role in eczema, psoriasis, maybe even all the autoimmune um, rashes we see in our patients. And I'm even more excited about the, the regeneration and the anti-aging effect that, that these will have. And that was a question that I had early on. I, I can understand that um, CBD products would help decrease inflammation on our skin. That was sort of easy for me to find evidence for, but I had trouble really finding, you know, finding evidence as to whether it would really help with anti-aging. But the more I looked, looked into it, I'm absolutely convinced um, that this is going to be huge and it has so much potential. So Great. I absolutely believe in it. Thank you. So um, Jason, I want to jump in on something that Ashley said. Sure. May I? Absolutely. So 
You're so wise, Ashley. <laughs> Dr. Ashley, you just, you're, you're really, I, I love you. Great dermatologist. One of the things that I want to play off of is there's not a scientific study yet, but what we're observing, which is one of the first parts of then taking science and going and examining it, is you showed that picture of the skin. And at the base of the uh, epidermis is a mother cell. And that mother cell has to reproduce every 24 to 30 some days. And then on the surface is all of, as the skin grows from this, where you see the bottom of this brown layer up to the top of the skin, the daughter cells that have been born from the mother cell continually get older and older until they die on the surface. Almost all skincare treats the daughter cells. Hemp is one of the few things, CBD is one of the few things that actually goes down and works at healing the mother cell. You, If a mother cell is gonna reproduce itself every 24 to 30 days, you really want that mother cell to get healthier and stronger and younger because then she's gonna produce an exact duplicate daughter cell that's gonna look better. So the endocannabinoid system, part of it is located in that mother cell. And hemp is known to reach that cell, especially when companies like Pop and Barclay allow us as formulators to create a targeted delivery system that gets the cannabinoids into the mother cell. Wow. <laughs> I just wanted to add that. Back to you, Jason. I'll, I got to memorize, I got to play this back a few times because I, so I can memorize everything you two just said and sound really smart. <laughs> <laughs> so he, here's not there. There was so much in there. I got to tell you the one thing that that struck me. Uh, I think because I'm probably the the most uneducated on all this is from the three of us, obviously, um, and and that is natural. That's the thing that came to mind because I hear of all these creams and I hear of all these chemicals and everything that are in those creams that, you know, hydrate and do all these you know, claim to hydrate and do all these wonderful things. And I'm sure they do or they wouldn't you know claim those. But what struck me that you both said is that the cannabinoids and hemp, and we'll talk about that in a, uh, a little more, um, but that they, they naturally work with our body, whether it's the endocannabinoid system or the mother cells, et cetera, et cetera and enable our body to do what our body wants to do, but maybe it's tired and it's worn out and it's sort of revitalizing. So is that a fair statement for, for me to make and the point for me to take away from what you both said? Ashley, Ashley you wanna take that? Um, yeah, I mean, I think so. I think one thing that, the one thing that I learned even from Linda when I was learning more about this is that to me, there's, I didn't realize the, there's a huge difference between taking it topically, you know, and take, and taking it um, by mouth. And so I think that when you take it topically, your whole, you know, it's a na very natural way for your whole skin, that whole system to use it, to use the cannabinoid, to really reset the skin's equilibrium, to really optimize um, what it can do topically. Because when you're ingesting it, which that is still a natural process, but your, um, your body may shift it to other parts where it needs it more. And so even though it might help your skin when you're taking it, you know, when you're ingesting it, when you're taking it topically, your skin can really have the most benefit from it. Um, and because, because it's the endocannabinoid system is connected to your, um, to your immune system, even, even using it topically can help your immune system, can help your whole body. And that is something that I think that's why these things are so far superior. Hope, I hope I explained that well. Um, but that's why these are so superior, I think, to some of these other products that we're using to you know, restore our skin back to equilibrium you, or using it to, for anti-aging or using it to de-stress our skin. But this is a really natural way to do it. And we can do it by applying it topically to the skin even more so than by ingesting it. Okay. Dr. Ashley, you really gave me, um, uh, you helped me remember something. And that is 
a chemical goes onto your skin and does the action, a natural ingredient often, not always, has the ability to really activate a process within the skin. So when we talk about natural, I mean, heavens, arsenic is natural. We, we don't want to take arsenic. But out of all the good nutrition, hemp is right at the top as a natural resource. I think when I talk about natural to my clients um, and customers that we manufacture products for, I try to help them understand that a natural ingredient like the can cannabinoids, let's shortcut it to CBD. CBD stands for cannabinoids. The CBDs have to be extracted from the plant. A la comes chemicals often. Where companies will use chemical solvents like toluene and and pentane and butane, butane, uh, propane, you use that in your barbecue grill. Yet that's used as a solvent to get the active CBDs out of the plant because you can't take that stock, that plant and put it on your face and have the plant deliver its goods. You've got to extract the nutrition. So when we talk about natural, we also really need to look at that it's not just a plant but how do we secure the active ingredients? Because if those active ingredients are uh, extracted the way Pop and Barclay does it, almost like through a slow crock pot and that slow, low heat over a very long period of time is an incredible commitment to get the CBDs out of the plant. I can tell you, most companies that come to us and want us to buy their hemp or companies that say, oh, I've found the best hemp manufacturer out there in the world, we'll test it. Sure enough, there's up to 15 chemicals in it. And so these chemical cocktails, it may be we got a natural plant called hemp, but if you extract it with chemicals, those chemicals are still in the process. They're still from the process, they're still in the product. And they affect our skin, they affect our body. So when I talk about natural, I really want to also go beyond the word organic because we don't use organic to describe, although there's organic chemistry. So we got to be, be careful there. But I like to describe it as toxic free. Free of any toxins that would have a side effect on the skin, the body, even the fetus in the womb. Okay. Wow. Jason, are there other things we talked about with natural that I've forgotten to bring up or Dr. <clears throat> Ashley's forgotten to bring up and you no. focus us? No, you nailed it. <laughs> but we did have a question um, kind of related to ingredients. Um, and that is, uh, this person is curious about THCA um, so Linda, this may be a question for you. Uh, THCA, um, this person's heard that it can be a sunscreen for humans, uh, as it is for plants. Can be what? Be a sunscreen for humans. Okay. THC is the psychotropic, uh, cannabinoid in hemp and marijuana. The marijuana plant, like a red geranium versus a pink geranium, produces a marijuana plant, produces more THC. A hemp plant produces a smaller amount. The THC, just to put it on the table, is the psychotropic cannabinoid that gets you high. When you put it on your skin, it does not get you high because it doesn't go through your liver. It is working on just the skin. So Pop and Barkley has the very legal limit, very low limit, of THC, 0 0.03 or below, that's their level. You can be up to point, uh, point 0.3, they're low. But yes, it does help protect the skin from sun, sun damage, from UVA, UVB, and UVC rays. Uh, UVA, the aging ray, UVB, the burning or inflammatory ray, UVC, the cancer-causing ray. 
So it helps in preventing all of those things and actually helping the skin recover if it's got some of those situations. So THC is a very important piece and component. I am not one that wants to um, have all THC go away. I mean, some people may abuse it as a street drug uh, or now a legal use. But in skincare, it's a very different conversation. It's not used for the fact of getting one eye. You can't. I mean, you'd have to deliver. You'd have to put so much straight on your skin uh, to have it be able to get into the bloodstream. But whoever asked that question, yes, that's very wise. THC okay. is part of the whole plant that helps prevent sunburn. You know, I didn't know and that. Sun damage. So I wonder uh, if you could, I wonder if you'd still have to wear a sunscreen though. I'm just curious. Well, a sunscreen, I like zinc sunscreens because they become a shield and the sun rays bounce off of it. Mm -hmm. It just all depends how long one's going to be in the sun. Um, if you're going to be in the sun for me, I'm very pale, very Norwegian uh, looking skin. If I'm in the sun longer than 10 to 15 minutes, I start to get red. The hemp plant or, and with THC might extend me 10%. So what's that, another two minutes? So a sunscreen really needs to be there as the shield and zinc will have those rays bounce off the skin. And that is gonna help prevent the inflammation and the heat. Some people don't think about a sunscreen sunburn this way, but basically the sun is baking your skin. Like think about how hot you get in the sun. Well, it's like the heat that cooks a sugar cookie. And when you cook a sugar cookie, you have a gly glycosylation, glycolization. Okay, we'll try that. <laughs> it, uh, it, it crystallizes. So that's the heat from the sun can crystallize collagen and cause it to break and cause the skin to collapse. Some of those very things that Dr. Ashley was talking about at the beginning. So I think it's extremely important to understand that THC may cut the redness and may eliminate some of the heat, but it's not the complete answer. I don't think any one food is the complete answer. I don't think hemp is the complete answer. It's an important part. It's been a missing part. Let's see if that person is satisfied with all of our answers. That's a good answer. Um, so, so let's keep talking about products for because um, we're on that that general thread. Ashley, as a doctor, you, you see so many skincare products. I'm sure um, you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, I know this is a broad question. Um, do they work is the first thing, you know, comes to mind. And I, I'm sure you're gonna, you, you may say, well, it depends. Some of them do, some of them don't. But do they work? And, and then, you know, take it one step further. Um, how, should we think that cannabinoids are better or equal? Or can you help unravel that? Because there are so many products, so many choices at so many different price points in the market. Yeah, I mean, yes, products definitely, definitely work. I mean, I think some work better than others. It really depends, like on what Linda was saying, how they're formulated. You really need to make sure that the active ingredient is going to go where it needs to go and, and get where, you know, and do what it needs to do. And it's really hard to tell that by just looking at a label. Um, and I struggle with this too. I mean, so it's overwhelming out there. So I think you need to find, you know, brands that you trust. Uh, sometimes I'll tell my patients just, you know, you know, start using a product. And if you think it's working, it probably is. Um, I'm here to help, you know, my patients and whoever, you know, needs help trying to kind of navigate that. But it is very confusing for the consumer. There's so many products out there. Um, but I know like even just the pop on Barclay, Bar Barclay products, that would be a great place to start. I know they have a wonderful, you know, extraction process. I know they have a really special delivery system that makes their products very effective and bioavailable. Like we were talking about the, those active ingredients really um, go where it needs to go and, and do what it needs to do. 
Um, I know that they can penetrate the dermis and rebuild all of the collagen. That would be the most, one of the most important things that an anti-aging product could do. Um, that's why we love our um, retinoids and our glycolic acid and our vitamin Cs because there's lots and lots of evidence that um, those products can help do that. Um, but what makes cannabinoids special, I think, is that it can restore the whole equilibrium to the whole skin. It can really de-stress the skin. And that is something that those other things that we traditionally use that I just talked about can't really do. So the cannabinoids do, in my mind, a little bit more than all of those other things can do because it can really bring the skin back to equilibrium, which is something that we just really haven't seen yet. Mm, okay. So <clears throat> yes, Linda, I, I tell my patients all the time, skincare is totally underrated. <laughs> I mean, even if you never want to come into our office, if you don't want to do Botox, if you don't want to do fillers, if you don't want to do lasers or peels, um, if you just get on a good skincare regimen um, and are pretty disciplined, if you look at your skin, you know, today and a year later, you can, you'll see a huge difference. My patients that I see every year, I've been seeing them now, I've been in you know, practice um, for a long time, many, many years. And so when, they, when, they, when my patients that I first met when I first started practicing you know, 10, 15 years ago, the ones that have been doing their skincare, and it doesn't have to be complicated, it can be simple, but the ones that are doing it, they look 10 years younger than the people that aren't. And I see that every day. So it's, it's huge. And I love helping, you know, people understand um, the power of skincare. So I think this whole new generation of cannabinoids is, is going to be, is going to be big. So let's talk about that. So results. Um, and then Linda, I want to come back to you on the product thing for a second, but Ashley, you kind of, you, you, you let into something that I'm really curious about. And that what should people expect when they use a good, like a Papa and Barkley, you know, with cannabinoids or, you know, even outside of cannabinoids, what should they expect to see in their skin? Your skin will look brighter. It will look smoother. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, sometimes people will use a product for a week and they're like, Oh, I love this product. My skin looks great. It's probably just more hydrated at that point, you know? And so when your skin's more hydrated, um, your skin looks better, the light reflects better off of it and you know, it looks more plump and smooth. But the real key is to use the products long-term. And so you need to, just like Linda was talking about that little mother cell that's dividing, it divides every you know, 20, 28 days, you get a new kind of cell layer that comes up to the top. You really need to let that cycle three times. So to really see what your skincare can do. And so you need to use skincare for three months. So I tell patients to, if you're going to buy something, use it until the bottle runs out. Um, people will bring in, you know, a whole graveyard of products that are like, you know, half, half used or, you know, they've used it for a little bit, but they're like, I don't know if any of this is working. It probably will work. You just, you just have to do it. Um, but some products are definitely, are definitely better than others. But yeah, you can expect a smoothness to your skin, a firmness, hopefully decrease in fine lines and wrinkles, an in, you know, improvement in your pores, evenness of skin tone. You know, people are really bothered by brown spots and red spots. So just keep going with your products. Just use them a little bit longer than maybe you think you should. Um, cleanse, put on a treatment product, and then moisturize. Okay. At night, cleanse, put on a treatment product, and then moisturize. Um, there should always be about three steps. And um, in the morning, of course, you have to use sunscreen. Um, but what's great about, I think, about this whole cannabinoid um, system and with the products, I think that they treat and hydrate your skin at the same time, uh, which is also something that we don't necessarily always see with some of these more traditional products. But I'm still a huge fan of, um, of moisturizer and keeping that skin barrier really, really strong. If your skin barrier is not strong, your skin's kind of irritated and red and blotchy. Um, and then any product you use isn't going to work. You're not going to like it because your skin is just um, going to get more irritated. So you have to mo moisturize your body. Can, your skin can use the more aggressive products. Okay. So um, 
I'm going to come to you, Linda, and, and we're going to talk specifics about products now. One second before we do that, and that is everyone who's on the on the webinar tonight, in about, I'd say about six minutes or so, we're, we're going to uh, go to a Q&A session. So get your questions in now. We have a couple um, in the backlog, but we'll get to those. But get your questions in because that, that session's coming up. So, Linda, back to products. So... You had mentioned, you know, natural, when it comes to uh, cannabis-based products, you had mentioned, you know, natural extraction, not using, you know, carcinogens, all these other things. What should we look for in a great skincare product? Good question. So first of all, it's hard to recognize all natural ingredients because Latin is required as you um, list of plants. So you don't necessarily see jasmine or tuberose rose oil, or you can't even recognize sunflower oil. It's, it's, or a hobo oil. It's listed in this, it's Latin. But when a company makes um, a natural claim, write them on their website and ask to understand the ingredients. And a company that's legit and straightforward should have no problem explaining any ingredient. So in the Papa and Barclay line, when they asked to have this formulated with their hemp, they said, we want something that is cost effective for clients. Um, we want something that's extremely effective. So as we looked for the ingredients, the first thing was the delivery system of the hemp and any other actives we were gonna use. So we chose an oleozone system. Probably sounds like a big word, but it's a natural system that plants have. And it's how to trap the oils, oleozone, in a like liposome to get them to penetrate. So instead of force penetrating with a chemical like propylene glycol, which is even in some natural deodorants, it's not a clean chemical. To use a natural way to deliver is optimal. And that's in the Papa and Barclay system. The other thing to look for in skincare is a synergy of active ingredients. So I'm gonna talk about one that most people when they would look at the deck for the Papa and Barclay wouldn't understand the word ectoin. Ectoin is a mineral that is produced in areas like the Dead Sea. And this particular mineral protects against blue light. And the company's done studies that if you're in front of a computer, you use your, how many people at night, you know, even in bed are reading on their cell phone and they've got all that blue light right on their skin. So to have a cream that can provide the important claims, claims of moisturizing, revitalizing, renewing, and in this case, a blue light protection. Those are the things to look for is not only the claims, but the substantiation that a company will go into on their website. I haven't gone to the Pop and Barclay website. I may need to support them with, ooh, let's explain all these ingredients better for their customers. Or if those of you that are here go on the Pop and Barclay website and ask questions, I'll be back here helping to answer those. So a good product when you hear, okay, here's a very simple answer. Dr. Ashley, you'll support me with this one, I think. Your very best skincare, you know it when you stop using it, you've run out and your skin goes, ah, I miss it. It's like my skin doesn't look the same. And when you can see, feel that difference, that's a skincare product that's being effective for you. And it's absolutely possible to make the most effective products naturally. So Jason, let's see if we answered your question. You did. You Sometimes did. I get so excited, I forget the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a couple of follow on things. And actually we had a question here um, related to product. Uh, but before we get there, so you've talked about Papa and Barkley products a few times, Linda. Can I always like to see it. Can, can you show us the product? And I actually have a, a picture too I'll bring up on, on the screen for us, but because I hate to be mysterious, but there's some good stuff if you can show it. 
There we go. Is my light good enough? Dr. Ashley's yeah. got just that beautiful light on her skin. I don't know. My computer seems to be getting darker as I'm going along here. She's got one too. Yeah, hers is showing better. Okay, so I'm feeling this left out. This particular. I'm feeling left out. So I'm you, you're not getting the whole one, are you? And put it up on this. There, I win. I've got it on the back of my, my hand. And also a good skincare product shouldn't require rubbing. You shouldn't have to push and force it in the skin. It should, it should, what we call an instant break. It should, the formula should break and feel liquid. And as you put it on your skin, you should be able to just glide it on. It's important. I always tell people the serum right after you cleanse, the serum is designed to penetrate the deepest. So if you think of that epidermis and dermis, that picture of the skin as a mattress and a box spring. You want the product to go through the mattress, get to the base of the mattress where it connects with the box springs. That's the epidermal junction. Already this product has penetrated. It's not sitting on the surface. It's gone all the way through the brown layer and is now beginning to enter the pink area. But that mother cell is there at the base of that brown area. So we want this product to quickly penetrate. It doesn't mean we don't want to leave some on the surface to feel moist and smooth. But if most of your cream sits on the surface, it's just treating old, dead daughter cells. Mm -hmm. That's not where the life is. So you want something that quickly penetrates. Now, if a product is just slightly sticky, slightly sticky for up to one minute, that's actually the natural sugars and natural proteins that are a little sticky that are on the surface. And in less than one minute, already the skin's not sticky. They have penetrated. That's a very good sign. When a product is not sticky one bit, it's filled with silicones and synthetics that, have, that don't have any food in them. So the food, as it penetrates, give it a minute. So I always tell people, you know, if you can't quite remember a minute or you're going, oh, I got to wait for the next step, brush your teeth, put your serum on, brush your teeth, or put your serum on, fix your hair. By the time you get through, it's been more than a minute, well, brushing my teeth, I go a full minute, but then put your cream on. So will follow with the Papa and Barclay. And this says body lotion. Some people think a body lotion is strictly neck down. Papa and Barclay, the, the difference between a body lotion and a face cream might be the expense and the number of actives. They put all of their actives in the serum so that you got all your anti-aging properties. And in the body lotion, they put the additional moisturizers. So how easy is it to take a lotion, a cream, and be able to go from face to body? And you can smell the wonderful hemp. It just smells like the natural plant because it's the whole plant. So a body lotion is not always okay for the face. It can have um, what's called comedones. Uh, comedonicity, yeah, get rid of the big word, blackheads. So blackheads are caused sometimes, most of the time, from outside products that have waxes that clog the skin. The Papa and Barclay body lotion has none of those waxes, I know, because I helped pick all the oils, a hoba oil, and the various ingredients that went into this formula, along with a really strong quantity of hemp. So as you put this on, on top of your serum, you now have got a protective layer. So it's, a, it's like um, underwear versus a coat. <laughs> That's a strange analogy. So <laughs> underwear, <laughs> uh, intimate, it goes into the skin and a coat, you know, that's going to coat and protect. I've never used that analogy. That was very <laughs> weird. Oh, well, maybe. He's... <laughs> I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that now. In my... 
I don't know about you two. Um, I don't know. While we're talking about underwear coats and products, um, we, we did have a question uh, about the ratios. So CBD to THC, is there a ratio that someone should, and what's the question here? What, what's the specific effective ratio of CBD to THC for skincare? I, Linda, is that something? So you the plant knows best. I'm going to answer that with God knows best. The plant was put together with those in a perfect harmony. And in a perfect harmony, in a hemp plant, the THC is a very minor part. It's almost like it's the minor powerhouse. Um, when you think of a rocket that goes into space, the power motor that got it there is really the smallest part of the plant and the smallest part of the rocket. But yet it's the power that got it there. So the THC is the power that opens the door on the cell that causes that uh, the, all the rest of the cam cannabinoids to be able to enter. Or maybe you like this analogy. The THC is the magic carpet that carries all the rest of the ingredients into the cell. So more THC is not better. It's the natural balance that's in the plant. So we see THC be, um, I mean, it's, it's only one to 2% of the plant, but that doesn't mean it's less important. And if you took and did 50% THC, you would have created a synthetic man-made structure. Go with it the way it was made in the plant. And this plant's been around and used as medicine for over 5,000 years. So I think today people think, oh, wow, we've discovered it. No, <laughs> we're at the last end of the train. It's been used in China as a medicine. It's been used all over the world as a medicine and not to get high. It's been used as a medicine to heal. So don't worry about the percentage of THC that's in it. Just look for whole plant distillate or whole plant hemp. That's, uh, that's what you want. And okay. then you can always ask the company to send you a spectrum. They should have. I know Pop and Barkley has a full analysis on every single product we manufacture for them because we get that analysis and then they do a double to uh, verify everything we've provided for them. Okay, so we have about two minutes left. Um, I have two questions remaining, and then uh, we have a couple of things that we wanna make sure everyone knows when we wrap up. So the first question is, um, actually we got three, because one just came in, but we'll answer them as quickly as, quickly as we can. Um, does the, uh, Ashley, you may know this, I don't know if there's any studies, so if there's not, uh, we, we get it, but, the cream, does it eliminate age spots? And if so, how long does that take? Um, I, I know we don't have any studies on that in particular, um, but it probably will improve. Uh, I, I know it will. I know it will improve your brown spots, but there's different kinds of brown spots on the skin. So if they're what we call sunspots, those ones that are very well-defined, you know, like a little circle on the skin, uh, those, those are hard to treat with creams. Uh, we can definitely improve, you know, improve the pigmentation and, and you'll see some lightening, but if you really want that spot to be completely gone, sometimes we do need to do other things in the office, but for that more like ill-defined pigmentation, you know, when it's kind of, your skin's just kind of like blotchy all over, it's not like one little spot, but if sometimes if it's just more blotchy, uh, that's the kind of pigment that can really resolve with creams. So I would give it a try. I would encourage you to give it a try. You'll get to a certain point, try it for two to three months, wearing sunscreen every day, even though you're, you know, in the house and um, try it for two to three months. And if the spot isn't where you want it to be, then maybe a dermatologist might have to help you with that, the last part of it. Okay. Um, we've talked to, we just, you and I just uh, mentioned uh, studies and was a question from earlier. Um, do you, either of you know of any scientific research 
papers or studies, and, and this question cites one of them. One of the articles this person read was Philip Cohen, Therapeutic and Cosmetic Uses of Cannabis Cannabinoids for Acne Treatment Skin Rejuvenation. Do you either of you know of any other great um, sources and studies that you could recommend? Israel has done more studies, I think, than any country. Um, they, seven, seven to 10 years ago, they actively took on the study of both THC independently and the whole hemp plant and found the whole hemp plant did a tremendous number of things. Mostly they were focused on cancer, um, diabetes, um, uh, anxiety. So there wasn't as much study that they did on the skin, but they did some. And again, they came up with the result of hemp on the skin was an overall wellness improvement. So that I think you could Google Israeli studies on hemp on skin and you'd probably land on some information. Okay, thank you. Um, last question here, uh, and then we'll uh, wrap up with a couple important things everyone should know, so no one go anywhere. Uh, the last question is, can you substitute CBD oil in lieu of cream? Um, Ashley. Um, I think you could. You know, some people really enjoy oils um, as their moisturizer, and I'm okay with that. Um, but I definitely like uh, some sort of moisturizer on top of like the serums that you're using because I think it it not only helps that skin barrier that I was talking about, but it helps the, the serums penetrate more as well. Um, but I, I'm, okay, I'm okay with an oil, with an substituting an oil. Um, okay. You have both been so fantastic tonight. Thank you both very much. Now, People, if people want to know more about you and your products and you know, everything, um, Ashley, where do they go? Social media, email, or website? Um, please give us direction. Um, on um, our social media is um, our Instagram is um, at Dr. Ashley McGovern or Manhattan Dermatology underscore, and our website is Manhattan Dermatology.com, and we're in Manhattan Beach, California. Okay. Um, and you can contact us. That's probably the best way is through Instagram. And we'd be happy to um, engage with you and talk to you and help you figure out what the best regimen is for you. Great. Linda, same question. How do people get to know all, more about you and, and what you do? Shea Organics. Um, we are on Facebook. So just spell the name C-H-A-E. It's not phonetic. It's not like Shea Butter. So you can see it under my name. C-H-A-E Organics. So we're on Facebook, um, Instagram, and you can go Shea Organics and it'll take you to a website until our new Shea Organics website is being um, up in about another month. So, and then if you're interested in having products manufactured, you can still come through those channels and ask questions in the info uh, on the website and we'll get back to you. Great. Thank you for joining this call. I acknowledge those of you that want education and are willing to take the time to learn. And so we're here because you're here. Thank you. So as a reminder, everyone, this will be played, uh, replayed uh, on threewells.co. And so you can uh, click there, it'll be on the homepage. It'll have a link easy for you to, to find us. And you can also find us on YouTube. Um, and if you go to YouTube, make sure you uh, click like and subscribe. I know we've all heard that a hundred times, but it's important to all of us. Um, and mostly, again, I can't thank you both enough, Dr. Ashley McGovern and Linda Shea, for your time. You're wonderful human beings, and all of your, your knowledge has been fantastic. So thank you both for this evening and everyone that joined us tonight. Go have a great night. Be healthy, be safe. And as we say at Three Wells, live well, be well, and do well. Have a good night, everybody. Go have a drink of wine. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.